Good morning. I'm here to go over the option advice for year five students. Um, I can't believe it's already March and I know that so many of you are already uh, deciding on very important decisions for your future and some of you might be planning to return for year five. Um, I'm going to go over some information and at the end of the option advice information I will also go over some uh, graduation information. Um, so let's get started. The option advice sheets are also available in the guidance office if you did not already uh, receive one in your first period class. Or if you don't have a first period class, please make sure that you come to the guidance office to pick one up. So number one, how many courses must I select for year five? Um, a minimum of two courses in each semester is required in order to be a student here next year. Two courses will constitute you being a part-time student. If you require being a full-time student, then that would be three courses per semester. Number two, are there certain courses that should be included? Yes, if you have not yet received your Ontario Secondary School Diploma, then you must make sure that you are including the compulsory courses that are required so that you can graduate. Um, also, we want to make sure that you are completing the correct number of courses. So in order to graduate, you will need 30 courses in total. Um, and we need to ensure that you are completing the 12 elective courses and those 18 compulsory courses. If you are planning to apply to college or university for the following year, then um, you are advised to make sure that you are looking at the admission requirements for those programs uh, so that you are choosing also the correct courses for those programs. Number three, must I take a religion course in year five? you are not expected to take religion in year five. Number four, how can I learn more about the requirements for post-secondary programs? So just as we have uh, researched in the past, you can go to the Ontario College website. Um, so the information is listed for you on the form, www.ontariocolleges.ca, uh, where you can research all the programs that are available. Uh, if you are planning on applying to university, then the website that you would go to is www.ontariouniversitiesinfo.ca. Uh, Again, those um, sites are listed for you on the form. Number five, how does my post-secondary destination impact the courses I select for the upcoming year? So. Again, just as we had discussed, you need to have the prerequisites for the programs. If you are university bound, your university admission average is calculated using the average in your best six grade 12 for you 4M university qualifying courses. University admission averages do vary depending on the program that you choose to apply to. The more competitive the program is, the higher the overall average will be. Some universities do limit the number of upgrades as well. So if you are planning to come back to upgrade courses, usually it is only two that the universities will allow for you to upgrade. But again, please check the university information site uh, for specific details on that. If you are college bound, you should be checking the Ontario Colleges Guide. Uh, we do have handbooks, but most of the information is now available on websites. Colleges, something to consider is that colleges do not give bonus marks for students who are taking U-level courses. So if you are planning on taking U-level English but are applying to college, then this is not necessarily the best case as you might, not, um, you might not do as well. So if you are college bound, you are um, encouraged to take the 4C English course. Also, you can take a look for admission cutoffs uh, on site and um, make sure that you are eligible for those programs. 
Something that's new, many colleges are now offering four-year degree programs. Although this program is being offered by a college, it is a degree program and they do require university qualifying courses. Please make sure that, again, you are paying attention to those particular um, prerequisites for the program if it is a degree program being offered by a college. Also remember that some programs in college are oversubscribed. These very competitive programs um, would require you to have the prerequisite courses completed by the end of first semester. If you're not sure, you can come and check with uh, me in guidance uh, when you receive your timetable in June. If you are college bound, something else to consider for next year is the Bridge program. Students may choose one of the following areas in Bridge. We offer general arts, media, graphics, and technology. If you are interested in the Bridge program, uh, which is offered through Mohawk College, then you are welcome to come and speak to Mr. C. Silvestri Mr. or Mr. J. Marcelli, who are the Bridge counselors. If you are a workplace bound student, then you should be thinking of the type of work that you hope to be doing in the future. Uh, again, for this particular type of work, you may come back and take co-op um, so that you can get some experience in the type of work that you are hoping to do in the future. Again, for more information about co-op, you can come to the guidance office and speak to the co-op teachers, Mrs. Gravina, Miss Susie, or Miss Stocko. And if you are considering the apprenticeship program, um, OYAP is a great option for you. Again, you can come to the guidance office um, and if you have any questions, we can speak to you or one of the co-op teachers can speak to you as well about the OYAP options. So registration day, um, please have your information completed by March 31st to ensure that you will get the courses that you want. Um, you need to complete uh, choosing your courses online through MyPath. There is a $45 activity fee as well and the verification of your registration form. That form has been sent home electronically to parents so please make sure that that is, um, that that is checked over and that if there is any information that needs to be updated that that is done as well. A lot of you already know that you will not be returning next year. So if you're not returning, what do you do? Uh, we do have a blue demit form that needs to be completed. Some of you have already done that and I know that many of you are still bringing those in. Thank you so much. We do appreciate that. If you're not sure that you won't be returning next year, you're not still undecided of what you're going to do, then we advise you to choose courses. Um, and then once you do decide, we can give you a refund for the $45 and take those courses off of your, your timetable, of course, okay? If you do need a blue form, please come to the guidance office and pick one up. Those are available for you on the table in guidance. Let's talk about graduation. So as of now, we are moving ahead with preparations for a grad ceremony. Um, number one, first thing that I wanna talk about is the potential grad list. So many of you are not on that potential grad list for various reasons. Uh, one, most of you, have not still completed your hours and I know many of you have told me that they're done but you just need to do the paperwork as I've said before I cannot put you on the potential grad list until those hours have been submitted and approved the deadline is April 1st if you do not have those hours in by April 1st your name will not be on that grad list also fees so some of you have been receiving forms about fees not being paid there is a fee to be, um, to be eligible to participate with the grad ceremony. The deadline for that is also April 1st. If you do not pay by the 1st, then you will be charged a late fee, but only up until April 10th. After April 10th, you will no longer be able to participate in the graduation ceremonies if you have not made your payment. So I did speak about the hours. Deadline is April 1st for those hours. I know that they have been trickling in. Um, please take advantage of the March break. You have some time. If you um, know of uh, various events that are running, 
Uh, check the LMS. I have updated and posted events. Check the board outside of the guidance office as well. Um, please try to get those hours done over the March break so that you can submit them. Number three, if you wish to be considered for grad awards. So we do have grad awards um, for candidates at the grad ceremony. You must put your name forward if you wish to be considered for those grad awards. The form is found on the grade 12 LMS page and that form must be completed and submitted by March 31st. There will not be an extension to this deadline. Number four, if you have not submitted your grad height, the form has now been closed. So you can no longer do it electronically. If you still plan on participating in the grad ceremony, um, then you must submit your height so that the correct grad gown height is ordered for you. You can see uh, Ms. Bozzo, Ms. Sakula, or Ms. Shirelli, and you can provide them with your grad gown height. And lastly, you must be on track, of course, to graduate um, in terms of having the correct courses. Uh, you must have your elective credits completed and compulsory credits by June. Um, you must be on track to graduate in order for your name to be on the potential grad list. Let's talk about your marks. So a lot of universities and colleges will be making decisions based on your midterm marks. It really is essential that you are attending your classes now and working hard now. Um, I've heard of some students wanting to wait to bring up their marks. That is not a good idea. Um, you should be working uh, to bring up your marks now and have the best possible midterm mark that you can have so that um, admission decisions can be based on those, okay? I wish you all much success and as you know, um, if you have any questions, please come to the guidance office. I'm always happy to sit with you and talk to you about those, those questions. Thank you.